All right. Okay. So now I'm going to give some examples of Venus being delighted by Saturn. And we're gonna focus on charts and I'm, I've got a lot of examples for you guys. So they're actually, this, this will probably take more than two videos. All right, so <clears throat> should be able to see my computer screen there with Kala up here, the software that I'm using. Okay, so this is the chart of Johnny Cash. Now remember the basic idea, go watch the video on where I explain all of Venus Delighted by Saturn. I'm not gonna just repeat myself there, but the basic idea, you really want this placement when Saturn is in a sign of, Sa sorry, when Venus is in a sign of Saturn or when Venus is aspected by Saturn, this is happening. Then when Venus and Saturn are conjunct, Venus is actually starved and delighted by Saturn. And that's where it gets trickier and but that's that's not that common, so it is trickier to interpret that. Just start with this. Um, so we have, uh, you know, remember again, d uh, when this happens, it's good because Venus is the strength of Saturn. Like it's getting, uh, you know, Venus makes one, you know, that Saturn makes one more realistic. It makes one able to bear the burdens of love. Like every relationship will have some challenges, some difficulties. So you want to be able to bear those and you know, buffer those smoothly and not make a mountain out of a molehill. And that's very much what Venus's job is about. And Saturn is a friend of Venus and Saturn helps that. And you'll notice that Saturn rules the trines from Venus. He always rules a trinal place from one of Venus's signs, which again is a clue of how supportive he is. Saturn and Venus rule the same elements, only air and earth signs. So again, they have a lot in common. They have similar agendas. Saturn's agenda is to help us bear the burdens of life and to survive, and that's not an easy job. And so Saturn appreciates Venus, that soothing comfort of Venus, and Venus likewise appreciates Saturn, Saturn's hard work and Saturn's discipline and Saturn's, you know, um, steadfastness. So we have the chart of Johnny Cash here. And you notice Venus is not in the sign of Saturn, so you might not see this automatically. But you'll notice that Saturn is, while Saturn's also in a proud dignity, Garvita Saturn, that's a very proud Saturn. And, you know, Johnny Cash suffered a lot, but really, you know, made something good out of it. That Saturn is giving its third house aspect to Venus, which is a full strength aspect. So, you know, the sage Prashra would have, you know, considered this Johnny Cash to have his Venus strongly delighted by Saturn. And again, the way that this works is that with these avashas, there's all kinds of avashas happening at any given moment. And then the stronger the planet is by dignity, the more it's going to give. So Saturn is so strong right there. So Saturn is really able to delight that Venus. That Venus could be really trashed in many other ways and still do well because of that aspect, that delight from Saturn. So when we look at Johnny Cash's life, like he really did suffer a lot, but he really found meaning in his life and he found meaning in his suffering. And he, he had a life that did lead him to a much more fulfilled place than the average person. And Johnny Cash was a very spiritual individual. And we can see that because of the Pisces ascendant um, and having four planets in Pisces there. Um, I'm, I know, uh, actually, I have a friend of mine who grew up in the same hometown as Johnny Cash, and he said that, like, actually, Johnny Cash had dinner at their family's house once and, like, was invited there, and that he was just, like, the most, you know, upstanding person, the most, like, uh, virtuous, you know, stoic type of individual and just knew what the right thing to do was and always did it, and... Um, he also suffered a lot, like, even, you know, being a musician... Uh, in his country town, he was kind of seen as like a complete punk, a, a, you know, a terrible thing for the society. And, you know, the, the police arrested him one time for picking flowers um, just because there was somehow a law that you couldn't pick flowers and, you know, or something like that. And, and he was picking flowers. And so they found a way to arrest him and they arrested him. And, you know, many other situations like that happened for him. And he had a really tormented and troubled life. He was called the man in black. Well, you know, look at how strong that Saturn is. And Saturn is 
the one that wears black and you know what I mean? That, that type of person, the man in black. Um, but through all his suffering and all the tragedies that happened around him, um, he remained married to one person and he could have been with any woman he wanted, you know, right. And he remained married to the one love of his life for his entire life. And actually the songs and the album that he wrote at the very end of his life before he died are like, ah, it just gives me goosebumps right now thinking about it. They're just really profound songs. The song hurt particularly, but, and even the music video he made, um, it was a really heavy Venus delighted by Saturn music video. If you want to check that out, if you're interested in that sort of thing, if you like his music, but basically it's just really amazing. And, uh, in the in the sense that this man um, went through so many distractions, so many of the things that normally throw someone off from their path and from their love in life, and he remained devoted to doing what he loved, and he remained to you know he remained making albums that he loved and that had a real meaning, a sense of meaning to them until the day he died, you know, and he remained married to the one that he loved until the day he died. So he had a good Venus, you know, overall, and so this is a good example of that. Okay, there's a lot more that could be said about each one of these charts, but when you teach, you have to narrow down on one little thing to try to convey this to the person. Um, and if you're a student and you're learning, there's the entire person's life is in this chart and you know, you're not gonna see all of that right away. So you have to keep that in mind and just, this is why meditation is really useful if you're gonna study astrology and why people that did astrology really never didn't meditate because it would just be ridiculous to try to know all this stuff without being able to focus your mind. And so when you study, you'll notice it's really easy to get thrown off course. And so the more you've meditated, the more you can practice concentration, the more you can stay on one train of thought and continue researching, continue studying, therefore continue learning. So we're gonna focus on the same thing now with Bjork's chart. Um, Bjork had, uh, we actually don't know if this is her correct birth time, just to be clear. And I actually suspect she might even be a Capricorn rising and that would put Venus in her first house, but either way, you know, whatever Libra rising is fine for now, because we're really just focusing on Venus and Venus, if it was the ruling planet or in the first house, it would give the same effects. Um, we're just focusing on Venus. It's delighted by Saturn. It's in a sign of Saturn, right? So again, we see these really good qualities coming out. And it does get a little bit of a planetary aspect from Saturn as well, but not the full measure. If Venus had been at uh, 10 degrees of Sagittarius, it would have gotten a full 60 out of 60 Virupas, and that would have also made it delighted. But Venus here is delighted in Capricorn, and it's with an exalted Mars. And what's funny is that she is known to be very, like, fiery. She wants, like, beat up a photographer or something. But I wouldn't blame her for it because, you know, photographers and paparazzi and things are, you know, they're very, yeah, they're, they do questionable things. And, um, and so uh, it, it's funny that that happened, that she does have that exalted Mars. But since it's exalted, you wouldn't think she would really blow up unless it was really necessary. So those photographers probably had it coming, if you ask me, looking at the chart. Um, but the, yeah, Venus, again, is just delighted. It's in Capricorn. And I think this is funny because she's one of my favorite musicians. I don't love all of her stuff, but some of the things she's done have been like really profoundly um, inspiring and moving to me. And I have my Venus in Capricorn. So I like a lot of ancient old things. That's another way Venus is delighted by Saturn is one can really just appreciate like things that have stood the test of time, like astrology or, uh, you know, like um, ancient cultures and mythology, which I know for a fact Bjork is very into that. Um, and as well as, you know, and she lives in Iceland and stuff. She's into this kind of old world um, way of living but also she's interested in like bridging that with technology and innovation and i could see that because of the rahu and gemini with jupiter it would make a lot of sense for that and the lords of rahu and k2 are interchanging and no doubt that has a lot to do with her eccentricity i'm sure um jupiter being her at makarika with rahu but again we don't want to go into like just reading her whole chart just saying she's a person who has gotten a lot of like meaning out of her life, you know, which is what Venus is about. And she's had a path that's been very fulfilling for her. And she's done a lot of good things with her success and with her money. And 
out of all the pop musicians, she's like considered like the true artist of the pop world. And that makes a lot of sense. So you would expect, you know, she would have, have a delighted Venus because she seems a lot like when you watch interviews and things with her, she seems just a lot more free in herself and like happy and fulfilled with what she's doing with her creative uh, work. So I expected her to have a good Venus and she did. Um, okay, now this is a fun one. This is a guy named Andre Brower. I'm not sure if I'm saying the last name right. He is a, he's an actor and he has uh, been in a lot of things, but I'm a, I mainly know him from this show, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, um, which I actually never seen until another fellow astrologer, uh, Carmina Amza, recommended that I check it out. And I did, and it was hilarious because it was written by the same people that wrote the show Parks and Rec, which I also enjoyed. Now, what you guys might see is that, wow, Venus is in Leo where it's starved by the sun. And it's with Rahu, so that's not that great. But it is getting the full aspect from Saturn, from across over here in Aquarius. So Saturn's giving a full 100% planetary graha shputa drishti aspect. And so he does have this delight, this strong delight from Saturn. And so he's like, uh, he's, he's maybe not got the best Venus, because of those other things, but it's still able to like bear the burdens of problems, still able to make very good decisions that will lead them to a higher, more fulfilled place over time. And it's interesting because like I've been saying, he, uh, you can, like I always say, you can, actors can only play a role that is in their birth chart that, to play. And they can only play a role that they have the karma to play, right? And so their charts actually describe the characters that they play a lot, a lot, often. And and now we don't know his time of birth, okay? Now this was just taken off of the internet, so you don't know if he's a Libra rising. We're really just looking at the planets here. But what's fascinating is that he play he plays a um a captain of the Brooklyn you know police department, and he is a black man and he's gay and he came out as being gay in the '80s. So he's like really the type of person who would have to have a strong Venus to be able to bear burdens. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what his whole character is based on, like being a very strong, stoic, Saturnian, Saturn K2, um, Saturnian individual who just can, can handle whatever and is like, you know, doesn't, he's not emotional. He never expresses his feelings. You know, he's just, he's just strong and disciplined. And like a captain of a police, you know, precinct would be maybe. But, <clears throat> What's fascinating is that like occasionally he, he opens up or he expresses and it's really funny in that way because it's not normal for him on the TV show. And this all just fits with his chart because Rahu Venus would mean one's sexuality is going to be different and weird and maybe pioneering or, you know, they're going to maybe have to come out in a place where, you know, they're not accepted. And Venus, what did I say about Venus when it's starved by the sun? Authorities will put pressure on you and will make you feel like your choices and your love aren't you know, good enough or are not, or, you know, some way they get pressure and strained by society. A gay black police officer would definitely experience that. Um, but if that police officer has Saturn K2 conjunct so strong and delighting Venus, he would bear that burden and still find fulfillment and still have a, uh, you know, a boyfriend or a husband and, you know, all these things and, and enjoy his Venusian side of his life. And so, that's kind of interesting because that's the case in that show. And that's what his charma is. <laughs> charma. It's what his chart and what his karma says. <sighs> okay. Yeah, that was hard to convey all of that. I hope you guys understood it and I hope it makes sense. Basically, you know, this is a person who has had the mixture effects of, you know, Rahu Venus qualities coming out you know, sun starving Venus qualities coming out. Um, and then the strongest thing being that really proud Saturn delighting Venus and therefore making Venus still, you know, be happy overall and be delighted. And that's, uh, so I, I, he's actually, he's not a homosexual in real life though. He is a straight man and he is happily married and 
yeah, so that's also worth noting is that he is happily married. He has children and he hasn't been divorced um, and he's a successful actor. So um, in his personal life, it does also seem like his Venus is delighted. Oh, um, okay, we're gonna deal with that in a second. Um, okay, now we come to the chart of Tom Waits. Tom Waits, he is uh, Sagittarius rising, and you notice that his ruling planet Jupiter is in the third house of instruments, but connected to the second cusp of the voice. And he's a, you know, he's a singer and musician. And he has a very like raspy, rough Saturnian voice. And look at this Venus delighted by Saturn in his second house. So um, that really, really fits, you know, if, if you know Tom Waits and he's a musician and he's kind of got this like rugged sort of like, you know, bad boy, uh, um look to him and i was going to say at some point while i was going over this that you'll notice that a lot with people who have their venus delighted by saturn they'll have that kind of like rugged uh sexuality or that like or something about them that's sort of like darker but in an appealing way or you know how like sometimes people are very attracted to like darker people or like something about them that's dark and or um i don't know there's just something about that you know that that they'll carry and they will, you know, like Johnny Cash had was the man in black. He had the sense of like gravitas, you know what I mean? What we would say that that might be the right word for when Venus is delighted by Saturn. And, you know, he had kind of like a darker quality to him. And Tom Waits definitely uh, does. Uh, Tom Waits is actually a funny bit of trivia is he has played the devil in more. He's like played the devil in more movies than any other actor ever. I find that really interesting. Um, and yeah there's just basically like this uh like this sort of um you know like they've just been weathered like they've they've went been through a lot of stuff and they're just still fine they're not ruffled by it and that can be very attractive you know um and so so that i think that that venus saturn kind of brings out some of this quality in a person and you know he has a really like rough and raspy voice but it's kind of likable you know it's kind of enjoyable and likable and that's very interesting because he has um you know he has his venus in the second cusp and a voice and delighted by saturn a planet of like dryness and roughness and jupiter is his ruling planet and the star by venus um and you know he's he, he was very much into drinking and you know smoking and all these things which are still you know drinking and alcohol is still ruled by venus um, but it's one way that Jupiter can be starved by Venus. Um, we'll get to that more at some other point if we talk about Jupiter's avastas. So, uh, so Tom Waits is also a good example of that. And, and uh, now this is just a random person um, that is not famous. And he has Venus, Jupiter, Mercury, and Saturn all together in Libra. So he actually has Venus being starved and delighted by Saturn. But what I notice here is that Saturn is exalted and Venus is in its own sign, very, very strong. And it's just a really a lot of good things going to Venus. So I don't really notice any of the Venus uh, starved by Saturn qualities in this person. And I pretty much only notice the Venus delighted by Saturn and then also Jupiter and then also Mercury qualities. So, you know, you're gonna see sometimes when it's trickier, and it's not as easy to see the picture, um, so I just wanted to pull this chart up to kind of convey that this person has had uh, Has found meaning in relationships and has not been He kind of has had he when he was younger. He had a lot of you know Issues with them and I think that's just more because of the k2 moon in the seventh house But overall his Venus is overall functioning. Well um, well enough in terms of, of uh, Venus This is a guy that's just another non-famous person, just a random person I know. And he has his Venus, again, in a sign of Aquarius. And he is an artist and he has been married. And he's the type of person who has definitely like 
he doesn't try to get more than he should. You know, he doesn't expect to get like this amazing, you know, you know, perfect woman or something. And he has, sometimes he gets a little too idealistic because the Jupiter is debilitated, you know, or he gets thrown off there with the Sagittarius um, malefics and Sag. But in general, that Venus delighting, delighting in Aquarius, I think is a really major helper for him. And it does make him able to like bear burdens in relationships more smoothly than the average person. And he doesn't uh, necessarily like make a mountain out of a molehill, but he has other issues in his chart. So he has some, you know, he has some issues in relationships, but um, this is a person who is like able to stay very lo loyal and devoted to a partner, you know, and has never like committed uh, adultery or cheated on them anyways. And and yeah, just, and doesn't have, like, he has that sense of realism and he, um, he, he appreciates like, uh, he, he gets that there will be, you know, problems in, in any relationship, but still goes forward with it. And he's been married, um, but he's not been married for forever. So he could get divorced. I don't know who knows, but he's been married for over a year and it's been going well. Um, and he was with that person for a long time. And he was really quite a, quite like a, more of a party animal and stuff when he was younger, when I knew him. So it's interesting to see him like much more settled down. Um, and he is in a Venus Dasha at this time in his life. So it's in the ninth house of marriage. So it makes a lot of sense that he would find, you know, enjoyment in kind of settling down. Yeah. Um, and this is another person that's not famous, just a random person that I know. And you see that they have Venus delighted by Saturn again in the 12th house and by Mercury, and it is agitated by the sun a little bit. And this person has had issues with authorities and with like, I don't know, have feeling pressure when it comes to that with relationships, pressure from society. But overall, this is a person that is very, you know, has been able to have relationships. Um, there's still a lot of, you know, it's not perfect. And they're, they're, they're not, it's not, they're not perfect in relationships and they're not married now. And they're, and, um, you know, again, this, this one placement doesn't define everything about whether you're going to marry or any of those other things. I'm not even, and again, you know, some of the people that commented were saying like, oh, but I have Venus in cancer and, you know, or this person does and they've stayed married. Again, I didn't say you couldn't get married. This is about how you feel in the marriage, how fulfilled you are. And until you know all these avashas, you're not going to know if something is canceling that out or, you know, overpowering it. So um, remember you know, this is like a lifelong study and you might be on year one. Um, so don't expect to know everything. But uh, yeah, but this person, he has been really good at like, you know, staying devoted to a partner if they're devoted to him, staying very loyal, bearing the burdens, bearing uh, the, the difficulties, um, not having enough, you know, money at times or, or like, yeah, like the plants in the houses of expenses, having a lot of expenses that drain him, you know, but still like not making it the partner's problem or the partner's fault at times. He's very easy to get along with too. He's like, he's really easy to get along with. People just really like him a lot, especially for someone who has Mars and K2 in the 10th, which can make one kind of rougher, you know? And he has this very rough quality to him. Um, and he's been quite a party animal at times. He's been, you know, quite a maniac party animal, to be honest. And that's that makes sense for that Mars and K2. And when he was younger, it was more like that, but he was still able, like, he still made everyone really happy and, um, made like, yeah, he made healthy and good decisions even while he was kind of that type of party animal or that's the weird thing, you know, like you meet some people and they're alcoholics and they're, or they're drunks or something and their life's a mess, but they're still like, have these amazing good qualities to them. But then other parts of the chart are just messing things up, but you see their Venus and it's just like, wow, you are such a good person. You know, it's just, yeah. So he's not like, it's not like, he's not like that. He's not um, like that at all, but you can see that and you can, you can start to, when you know all these avashas, you can start to really see a person and help them on a much deeper level. Um, so uh, yeah, this is just another person who's been able to be a good partner, been devoted, you know, made choices that led them to a higher fulfilled place through the realism of Saturn. You know what I mean? And not being too fantastical or just, you know, wanting things to change too quickly, which can be the moon, or, you know, putting too much pressure on the relationship, um, needs to be a certain way, which could be the sun, you know? So, Venus delighted by Saturn, it's a very good thing. 
All right, you guys. Take care.